Hello friends, in this video tutorial we will learn about unit testing using the Spark framework. As part of the agenda we will cover the various uses of the def keyword in the Spark files. The life cycle of the Spark test will see more details around the test fixtures like setup, cleanup, setup, spec, cleanup, spec. We'll see what are the different styles of writing assertions basically shorthands we'll see how we can create beautiful html based test execution reports of our spock based tests and we'll also try to understand those reports how they look and what all where we should navigate so let's get started So I've created a new Gradle based project in IntelliJ and I've added two dependencies. One is for the Groovy language, which is a compiled dependency. Another is the test compiled dependency for Spark framework. Once you have these dependencies in the Gradle file, we can first try to do a Gradle clean build to see that these dependencies are building fine you can see that it's very successful now let's get started so I have written a simple Java Pojo which is named city info it just contains two fields like city name and population and a default constructor for these fields which will allow you to create this kind of object we'll be using this in our sample Spock specification that we'll write so go to test and let's try adding a new Groovy class like let's name it as new spec and as we saw earlier we need to extend it with the specification class since we are writing a Spock specification. Now first understand let's understand the various usages of the def keyword as we have talked about Groovy being an optionally or dynamically type language the def can be used to define function like this like the way we define our test or to define any kind of keyword like if you want to define say suppose a data variable of type string you can say just define a new string having value say India right you can define any data type like like suppose integer like new double let's say 120.34 so you can see that this def keyword is pretty extensible and you can use it to write or define either functions or any other data variable so now let's get started with a sample specification or a sample function. I'll name it as assertion tips probably. And as we saw in the last tutorial, we have three major blocks for a Spock test that is given when and then. You can omit if you want the given block, but if your test has a then block, then it should be followed by a when. So a then block cannot exist without when so if I remove this when and I try executing this you'll get an error we, we can see that in later examples as well for now I'm adding the when block so I'm saying that I have a list of uh, city info objects okay so I'm saying def city list linked list city info okay and when I add no need a semicolon Suppose Mumbai 
and I am adding say let's say any random value for population say 1200 let me add two more cities here like new city info say Delhi 1000 and let's add one more new say Jaipur say 500 so since these are integer let me convert them back to the yeah. so now what now suppose I want to assert the names of cities in this city list variable so if I have to assert them individually then I'll have to probably do a get zero suppose equals equals Mumbai this is one way if I try running this test give me an error okay I need to add a new here oops now let's run and so you can see here now it passes but this is little cumbersome where if I had say 10 names I had to write 10 different statements so Spock gives you a shorthand to do this you can do city list star dot city name equals equals a list Mumbai Delhi Jaipur and let me comment these and let's try running this again you can see here it passes so you can notice here that this is such a short way of defining this assertion and it's really powerful and readable without without cluttering your code okay so now let's see about test fixtures so test fixtures are nothing but special hooks that are provided by the spot framework so these hooks are like in like you can compare them with JUnit where you have before test after test and before execution and so it's similar to other testing frameworks so we'll see for example the setup this is a special hook which is called before every test execution probably I can give a print statement here in setup and similarly we have a cleanup and let me say clean up here and if I execute here I should see this in setup and clean up once since we just have one test here so let me run this and we can see here in setup and clean up is printed similar to these hooks we have setup spec hook this is called one for this entire specification so if I have say 100 tests in the same specification it will be just called once it's kind of test setup code at the spec level spec setup and I will say def clean up spec oops and if I run this again I'll expect all of these to be printed once so first is spec setup then 
in setup cleanup and cleanup spec so to understand it in a better way I'll just try to copy this test and I'll just rename this and now we should see the in setup and cleanup messages twice whereas the spec setup and cleanup spec should still show once so let me run this yeah so you can see spec setup and cleanup spec are appearing just once in setup and cleanup are appearing once each for the individual test in the in our specification okay now coming to the next section we we will look at how we can generate HTML based reports using using a library and for any any testing framework or for any test suite that you write reporting is one of the most important areas which which is something that gets passed on to the business stakeholders for whom you are writing the test and basically it gives you a statistical information about what is happening with your test how fast are they executing what are the failure rates what are the success rates so in those terms reporting is an essential part so to do that basically you need to go to your build.gradle file and you need to add include these packages as test compile dependencies and these are all open source provided by Spock you, you can feel free to use them and now once you add these dependencies now whenever you run your test like this new spec let me run this again the framework will now generate these reports in your build folder with a folder named Spock reports you can see here this index.html you can try opening this in a browser you can see that this is a beautiful HTML based report that got generated it has various parameters like total number of specifications what was the success rate how much time did it execute it so these are few details which you basically miss when you run the test on terminal but these details really help to understand what is happening with your test now you can further drill down by clicking this now now this is spec level details it says it executed total two features and these features are also detailed you can click and drill down further if they have details and an important point here is this given when and then you can see some blank lines this is because we have not given any uh, definition or text there on those blocks if you if if you want we can basically open our test and if I say given city list when I add cities to city list then I should be able to assert something like this and let me run this again and we'll see the report back okay these tests have passed let me open the now every time you run the test these reports are generated again let me go here and you can see here these text has now come so this is how powerful these HTML reports are and they are the setup is really simple it's just a matter of adding a new library in your gradle based or maven based project and once you run those projects or run those tests the reports start appearing so these are really powerful and you can basically integrate them with any continuous integration kind of framework as well like Jenkins or Bamboo so that way it really gives you a lot of power in getting a detailed statistics of your test execution so that's it for this tutorial thank you